Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at something called fractional reserve banking, the reserve ratio and the money multiplier, and how essentially banks can create more money from an original deposit. With that said, let's get into it. So the first term that we are going to take a look at is called the reserve ratio. And the reserve ratio isn't too complicated of a concept on its own, but more complicated than that is how it's used to create money seemingly out of thin air. And the reserve ratio is the proportion of deposits that a bank must keep in cash and they can't loan this money out. So think of it as the money that the bank would keep in a safe in the back rather than putting it back into the economy. Let's take a look at an actual example to really drive the point home. Consider somebody who goes to a bank to deposit $1,000. Well, the bank is going to categorize this money in two ways. The first we'll denote by this little check and that's going to be loanable funds. It's the money that the bank can take from this person and then re-loan it out to a new person who walks into the bank later. The other part is denoted by this safe and we'll call it cash reserves. This is the money that must be saved in the back and it can't be loaned back out. Well, remember the reserve ratio is the percentage of money or the proportion of money that must be put in the safe. So in this theoretic example, we're gonna say the reserve ratio is 10%. In the US, that's actually what it is. So consider this person who comes in with $1,000. Well, if 10% of it must go to cash reserves, then 10% of 1,000 is just $100. But that means that the other 90% or the other $900 can then be loaned out. The bank being a business is obviously going to loan that money out and therefore a new individual is going to come along and down the road, they're going to have $900 to deposit. Where did they get the 900 from? Well, it was the loanable funds from your original 1,000. So they're gonna to come to the bank with $900. That's actually a loan from you earlier. And they're going to deposit it maybe in the same bank, maybe in a different bank. But the point is that when they deposit it, 10% or in this case, $90 will go in the vault and the remaining 90% or $810 can then be loaned out. This process is then going to continue when they loan out that $810. So now somebody comes into the bank with 810, 81 goes in the vault, and 729 gets loaned out. And this process will continue once again, $729 gets loaned out. It gets brought back into a bank down the road where $72.90 is going to be put in cash reserves or 10%. And then the other 90% is $656.10. And this process, you guessed it, is going to continue. So this time $65.61 is put in the vault and $590.49 is loanable funds. Once again, someone's going to loan out that $590.49. And this process is going to continue when they go to the bank. Now this process actually happens a lot. In fact, it happens over 100 times where your original $1,000 is going to get re-loaned back out as $900 and then 810 and so on and so forth. And so you can see all of those on screen and eventually you're going to get to $0 loaned out, which is the point you see right here, but that's only after 116 iterations. And that might lead you to ask, well, how much money is created from the original $1,000 deposit? And this introduces a term that in economics we call the money multiplier. And the money multiplier follows a simple calculation. It's just one over the reserve ratio. And what we're going to use that for is to sum all of these new numbers up. Instead of actually going into Excel and summing them up one by one or running a calculation to sum them all up, we can just use the money multiplier and then multiply it by the first loanable funds from our original deposit. Let me illustrate that for our example. So the money multiplier is just one over the reserve ratio. And in our example, the reserve ratio was 10%. So it's just one over 10%. However, 10% as a decimal is 0.1. So one over 0.1 is equal to 10. Cool. So now we know that our money multiplier is equal to 10, but let's take that to our original example where we came in with $1,000. And you'll notice that we had loanable funds of $900. That is 90% of the money that didn't need to go into the vault and that was our loanable funds. So we're going to take that first iteration, that first number of loanable funds dollars, so in this case it's 90% since our reserve ratio is 10, and I'm going to multiply it by the money multiplier. And this would tell me that the total money created from my original deposit is equal to $900 times the money multiplier, which is 10, and that's $9,000. So if I go back to my original list of all of the times this happens, if I were to sum up all of these columns, that would just give me 9,000. This is how we use reserve ratio and the money multiplier to see how much new money is effectively created seemingly out of thin air from a bank reloaning out 90% of your deposits every single time that happens until eventually there's no more money to be loaned out. 
Now keep in mind, this example was just $1,000. Imagine the millions and billions of dollars that are actually going through banks each and every day. And this happens to all of that money. And this is just one of the ways that money can be created. If you found this video helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.